time humanity's greatest obsession it seems like our entire life depends on it wake up at 7 a.m get ready and rush to catch the 805 train absolutely be at work by 9 a.m come back at 6 p.m dinner at 8 p.m turn the lights off and hit the bed by 11 p.m start the whole thing again every single one of our actions is based on time but what exactly is time is it this ticking sound if you stop what you're doing right now do you feel it and there's another interesting thing that i noticed about time when i'm in a stressful situation i usually take a long breath close and open my eyes and focus on what's in front of me this action always seems like it slows down the time almost as if my reality is caught in a smooth slow motion but just a second ago everything felt so rushed and fast if you close your eyes and count to 30 seconds you would soon realize that even half a minute is actually a long time let's do a small experiment this is a view from my kitchen so we are going to stand in my kitchen and look at that mountain for 30 seconds try not to look away and don't focus your attention on something else ready let's begin How did it feel? Did it feel like it lasted longer than how you usually experience half a minute? Our experience of time varies depending on the state we are in. Even an hour drifts by quickly while a minute can feel like an eternity. The concept of time is so widespread yet so complex to grasp. This is theoretical physicist Julian Barber. He has been studying and researching the nature of time for over four decades, and in his recent work, The End of Time, he explains that this strange feeling of passing of time is nothing but an illusion. Barber strongly believes that every moment of every individual's life, birth, death, and things in between exists forever, ever so still like a painting. We are forever young and aged in our classrooms and in our deathbeds, getting married and going to school, opening Christmas presents and mourning a loss. According to him, every moment is eternal and everything exists forever, like still frames. The bizarre nature of this timeless reality doesn't escape him and he completely understands how odd this sounds. But logic and common sense never did go hand in hand when it comes to understanding the universe. Plenty of gifted minds have perceived a great many aspects of our reality differently than what was later observed to be the truth. And in the study of our reality, even truth has to have some degree of tolerance. Barber argues that our sense of the passing of time is just as illusionary as the sun revolving around the earth which the whole of humanity believed at one point. He presents a universe with no time and he goes as far as to say that the concept of time has to be removed from the equation for us to have one seamless theory of the universe comprising everything from the tiniest of objects to some of the largest bodies. But this is not an entirely new idea put forth by Barber. American physicists Bryce Dewitt and John Wheeler's 1967 equation managed to successfully merge quantum mechanics with general relativity. This remarkable feat in what is known as Wheeler-Dewitt equation is achieved by eliminating the time aspect entirely. Stephen Hawking took Wheeler and Dewitt's work into account while attempting to explain the theory of everything. Time is an elusive concept, especially when you attempt to closely observe and study it. It always reminds me of the Penrose staircase. The more you attempt to study it, the closer you are to where you originally began. But what is the basic explanation of time? 
I would say that time is simply a measure of change. The train is at the position A at one instance and at a position B in another instance. You're watching this video now and you'll be doing something else later. The handle in the clock moves from one point to another, earth revolves and so on. Reality consists of this constant ebb and flow that's much more fundamental than time. And time is nothing but a measure of this ebb and flow. So how does Julian Barber explain the timeless nature of our reality? He argues that we don't live in a single universe that passes through time, but many different versions of ourselves simultaneously inhabit a multitude of static, everlasting versions that include everything in the universe at any given moment. Think of still photographs continuously taken at every single moment of your life and all of those millions of still photographs existing simultaneously, all at the same time. Every single frame or version is a now, and each now is self-contained and timeless. Barber calls this Platonia, honoring the Greek philosopher Plato who talked about the theory of forms in which he describes a reality consisting of eternal and unchanging forms. Take memories for example. Think of an instance in your life, a special moment. How is it playing in your head? I definitely don't see it as a movie that's playing out. I see flashes of images rather than a clip. It doesn't have any time associated with it. No duration, it just is. So any passing of time we experience is just because of these image-like memories. Memories that might be from a different now, as Barbara calls it, a different frame, that still exists along with this moment. The link that connects my present moment to the past and the link that gives me the sense of this time passing is the fact that I think I remember. According to Barber, the illusion of motion occurs because many slightly different versions of us, none of us which move at all, simultaneously inhabit universes with a slightly different arrangements of matter. Each version of us sees a different frame, a unique, motionless, eternal now. This is where the idea of immortality comes in. If Barber's take on our reality is indeed true, then aren't we all immortal in a sense? Each existing in a different frame for eternity. This notion of timelessness for me provides a whole new angle to the process of being in the present moment. Lately I see myself attempting to be in the present moment quite often but the very fact that I'm attempting defeats the whole purpose because it's the path of least or no resistance, just a state of simply observing what is. Oftentimes I find myself being anxious for no reason, afraid. Then when I closely examine it, I find that the anxiety or fear stems from that very resistance. I find myself clutching to a hazy image from the past or a self-created hypothetical image from the future, but completely absent from where I actually am, which I'm beginning to realize is the only truth there is. I apologize for this delay. Um, I just moved to another country and it took some time to set things up. But I do have a lot planned for this channel in terms of films and series, so please stay tuned. I love producing this web series and I have a lot of fascinating things planned for this channel. But each of these episodes take a lot of time and effort to produce, starting from researching, writing, narrating, editing, and adding motion graphics. And that's why I recently created a Patreon page. For those of you who don't know, Patreon is where you could donate anywhere from just a dollar or more per episode to support your favorite creators and artists. Obviously, these videos will always be free to watch, but I would highly appreciate if you are in a position to donate even a dollar per episode on Patreon. Your donation would enable me to post videos more frequently and in much higher quality. I have the link to the Patreon page here and in the description below. 
If you can't donate anything at this moment, an even bigger help would be to spread the word about this channel with your friends and on social media. As usual, if you like this episode, leave a like and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.